to welcome Reverend Sonia Davidson to this podium this morning to bring us a message of light and love and hope and peace. Will that indefatigable energy <laughs> that she will just light up the place. So please help me welcome her. <laughs> and it is my extraordinary prayer, a pleasure, to welcome you all to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, and also an extra present pleasure for having my beloved Carol Campbell with me on the platform this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Those, those um, what do you call them? Slips of the tongue, right? I blame it on the weather. I need more fluid. Okay. <laughs> more fluid. You know, you have to find something to blame it on. So my talk this morning is inspired. It wouldn't let me go. It found me. And it came to me repeatedly, even before this week, when I had the opportunity to experience both a Thanksgiving service, what some people call funeral, right? And a wedding on consecutive days. And they were both just absolutely wonderful experiences for different reasons, of course. I will mention maybe a little bit of what I got from both of them later on. But I start with Dr. Hearn, Ernest Holmes's How to Use the Science of Mind, pages 116 to 120. A lovely book, and I'm just going to give you just a few insights from it. He asks a question, is there or are there long-held desires that are eluding you, and I call them regret. Is there a monkey on your back which won't jump off? Is there some painful memory that refused to be silenced? Is there a destructive habit that you deeply desire to change? And it is taking a long time. Is there a relationship which you, in which you have been unhappy or dissatisfied, and the memory of it lingers on? Is there a status that you desperately want to change, and it hasn't yet materialized? It doesn't matter what the nature of the situation, he says, or how deeply you care or how strongly you care about it, and how much you're attached to the, any of these situations or others, you are to believe it can change. And this is the point I want to mention. How many people who have been in wonderful relationships and when their partners pass on, they will say, no, sir, no, go back there again. No, no, no. It was wonderful. I don't want to go back there again. I don't think I'm going to find anybody like the one I had before. I don't know if any of you have heard that, but I've heard it more often from women than I've heard it from men. So it was a real joy for me yesterday to witness one of the most beautiful human beings, a young man of only 50, who got married yesterday for the second time after demonstrating the most beautiful love, compassion, clear, caring, and devotion to his first wife who passed on. It was such a thrill to see the joy in his face, the serenity, as he took on new vows. Women, we can do it too, those who have 
had wonderful relationships, we can move on if the partner goes. And if you have had relationships which you'd rather forget, remember, we can move on too. My mother left this earth October 1964. She was 57. My aunt, Iris, her younger sister, left this earth in July 2019. She was 108. And when I went to her Thanksgiving service, there was so much joy, so much presence, so much genuine celebration. And when, remember, we were reminded that someone of 108 would have been born only 70 years after slavery was abolished. And yet this woman took on a life that was just out of reach in the minds of many persons. She did everything that she wanted to do and more. She even drove a long, who remembers Studebaker car? A long, no, nobody in here. Studebaker car. And she drove it. She was the, apparently the only woman in Ocherius who was driving a car, period, at that time. And what struck me why I wanted to share this was when I heard all the stories about her, she was my mother's closest sister in age and also in friendship. And it was as if all the memories that I had thought had left me of my mother and how life was just came flooding back to me. Yet, I do not regret the fact that I had not been thinking about those things because I realized that all that I had experienced and delighted in in childhood had become embodied in me, incorporated into the way in which I now live my life. And therefore, there was no need for me to be constantly going back over to the times that I had experienced in growing up. I did not regret that it no longer existed, and I did not have any desire to bring them back in the form in which, even if I could bring them back in the form it had taken. I consider myself fortunate that I have not spent years of feeling bereft with grief, nor considered myself an orphan, never, who had lost family, home, privilege, and love, and maybe even some level of financial comfort. No, it is clear that all my life experiences had left an impression on me and all those impressions were outside of my conscious awareness. They were family, this family was riveted in my mind and in my neural networks and therefore in my memory. Hidden away in hard drive, is it soft drive? Mm -hmm. it's a hard drive, okay. Okay, hard drive, but still prompting what was happening on the surface of my life. Modern science would even have us believe that some strong stimuli may leave impressions deep enough to be encoded in our genetic material, or DNA. That's the one we pass on to our children. And my daughter, one of my daughters was there, two of them came, one didn't, said afterwards, oh my gosh, I am just like her. That's my aunt. I am just like her. Could it be that it is in the genes, right? 
And I, I didn't ask her what about it. But it is interesting to know that I may have passed on some of that experience in my DNA to her. Now, you can't take credit for all of it, right? My husband had a role in that as well. <laughs> so why does all this matter? It matters because memories are the past in the present. The past in the present. And if that confuses you, I hope when I'm finished, you will understand. What we are thinking, believing, accepting, expecting are all the seeds we are sowing which will become the fruits, the experiences of tomorrow. However, what we are thinking, believing, accepting, expecting are who we are in this moment as a result of how we have weathered past experiences. It matters less what experiences we have had than how we have responded to these experiences. We know that, don't we? If we have had experiences which thrill us and we savor the thrill. And we may even spend some time thinking about that thrill throughout the day. We find that that's fine, all well and good, as long as we know that they have come to pass. But if we have had experiences which we ponder over and over, which are experiences that have disturbed us, and we have not found a way to look at them in the light of truth, which know that every experience comes with a lesson, comes for a purpose, because we also need to know that within them is the power and presence of God, no matter their appearance. Because as the psalmist says, whether I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I go to the mountain top, thou art there. And I say, also, biblical quote, there is no place where God is not. So no matter what the storm may tell us, the presence of God is there. I had a wonderful life growing up. Free, stress-free, even a bit indulgent. Growing up in the garden parish of this stunningly beautiful land is nothing to scoff at. But it is behind me physically and remains a faint memory until it was disturbed or, well, disturbed in a good way recently. <laughs> it, was, it, was shaped, it has shaped and molded me, but it belongs in the past as it should be. No longing for, no regret that it is no more. Longing and regret have no place in the present unless we intend to create more longing and regret for tomorrow. If longing and regret occupies our mind and attention, there will be no space for embracing and enjoying the infinite possibilities of now. We will not be able to pay attention to all the wonderful things that are going on around us. No one can live in the past. There is only the present. Let sleeping dogs lie. We need to turn our attention, yes, to everything around us and within us, and thank it for being. Praise it as advised by Guru of Prosperity, Catherine Ponder who speaks wonderful words of encouragement to us to praise everything in the prospering power of prayer, that is a book which is guiding our class now, that is held on Thursdays at seven, from seven to nine. She says, spend your present in thanksgiving. Thank and praise everything you have now, no matter the 
hear the apparent shortcomings. She says, praise your body, no matter what. Praise your purse, praise your business, praise your house, praise your family, praise your country, praise your life, praise the weather, praise the man at the, who is trying to clean your window when you're not ready for it to be cleaned. Praise every single thing that's happening in your life. And guess what? I have been fired up this week because just with the intention to praise, everything is revealing itself to me that is inviting me to praise it. It's inviting me to praise it. I've been walking around in my office praising all the plants, the ones who look like they're leaving me and the ones that look like they're coming up. And I'm now seeing some who I thought were leaving me. I'm seeing just coming up out of the earth, a little shoot, and it works. I am asking you to do this. I'm going to be like Reverend John and give you an assignment and just praise, 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 right? I, I would like to praise you now because you are out here today when the sun is hot and there are other things you could be doing. I give you praise and thanksgiving and I want you to turn around to people there and say, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Mm -hmm. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. <laughs> yes, oh boy, hi, ah, yes. Oh God, you'll never run out of things to praise. And look, I looked up gratitude. And I, the, 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 yes, we speak about gratitude in here a lot, but the, the dictionary meaning says, to be thankful for what you already have. I am saying, Praise everything, whether you think it's on its way to you or not. Just praise it, praise it, praise it. And when you walk around, even if you, you can say it to, you know, pass everybody and say, I praise you. Instead of good morning, say, I praise you, I praise you, right? Look for their reaction, right? <sighs> yes. 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 And learn this, uh, this song. You said the, the praise song. We'll learn it for next week, right? We'll learn it so that we'll really see how appropriate it was. Mm -hmm. All right, to quote Ponda again, affirmative prayers that express praise, thanks, blessing, confidence, and rich ideas of good are powerful yet simple channels for making the right contact. This is a chapter she has on the right contact. There are several um, lesson she gave us about making the right contact. And that is not about trying to find who is in charge of, you know, some bank that you want a loan from, right? The right contact is what she is saying. The powerful contact is the super mind of God. That is the contact we want. And she said, praise well, it's a powerful yet simple channel for making the right contact with the super mind of God within you. And she says for prosperity because she's a prosperity guru, you know. But in her mind, everything is prosperity. So, and it is true. Another opinion she gives, if we wait for things to happen before you praise and give thanks, we will wait indefinitely. Indefinitely, she says. So, stretch the reach of your mind. Use your imagination and praise what you imagine. Dr. Ernest Holmes encourages us to let our imagination go to work for us. And I quote him here. There's a programming in man which says, reach, reach, reach for the skies. Dig deeper, dig deeper. So when we dig deeper, like the trees, we dig deeper into the roots, and we rise higher. No matter how great our past or present can be, have been, our future can be even better still. And those are my words. Now, there is a, um, these lessons have been coming to me so much through my beloved um, son of Mrs. Castruta was looking so gorgeous yesterday. He's the one I spoke about who got married yesterday, right? Got the lessons of living now. 
and put in the past behind you. I got it from my Thanksgiving service of my aunt. But there is one which is a little more, needs a little more digging deep for me. And there is some cis man. I have changed some of the, the stories, but you'll get the essence of it. Um, there's a thing to protect the person. The person was forced to sell a, an idyllic home, it's a man, which he had built and developed into an oasis in the city. The shock of being separated from this treasured possession sent him into great grief and years of deep depression, during which time his health began to fail organ by organ. Yet he ruminated day after day about his loss. He was in so much pain. I felt the energy of it, and I had to put on my breastplate of righteousness. For a moment, though, when I asked, tell me about the home, he switched his attention from his loss and the complaints about his health, and began describing with vivid detail his beautiful oasis. It was so gorgeous, he said. There was no other place like it in all of Jamaica. So much so that someone came from abroad and said, this is the most beautiful place that I have seen. In his eyes, they were, it was the best. And he stood up straight, sat up straight. His countenance changed. He even managed to smile. The eyes sparkled and the energy which came off of him. When he brought into the present that which he had left behind in his mind in the past. I said, do you see what had happened to you? And there was a big laugh. He had not realized. I say, do you know you are living in comfort now, being taken care of, although you're not in that big, beautiful home? But praise, oh, I just read it. Praise the fact that you are being taken care of. Praise the fact that you are living with people like you who are loving and kind and who love you in this place. And most of all, praise the fact that you are free to travel anywhere in the world without thinking about who is going to look after my house. I left that message and I will see, I know it has been planted and I am confident that it will grow. It will grow. And so, the story of Emmett Fox, beautiful Emmett Fox, written so many books. He says, the story of your life is the story of your relationship with God. And when we live our life always recognizing that whatever we have has been given to us by the creator of all, and whatever has been created through us can be created again. No matter what it is, it's an experience, a state of mind, it is things. The story of your life is the story of your relationship with God. And there's a lovely affirmation. The presence of God is now revealing its divine nature by means of me. Whenever we feel that we want to come into the moment and move away from the past, and center ourselves. Remember this affirmation, you can say it with me, the presence of God is now revealing. The presence of God is now revealing its divine nature by means of me. The divine nature by means of me. I just said, I am where God shows up. If you don't remember that, you make up one. I am the place where God shows up. Say it often as you need to. Say it until you mean it. Say it until you believe it. Say it until you are it. God is showing up as you right here and right now. 
Let it flow. Let it radiate. So, live now, praise and bless now. What you celebrate now are the thought seeds you are sowing for the present, which will be in tomorrow. Never forget that the circumstances of your life for tomorrow are molded by your mental conduct today. Emmett Fox. Affirm again, I radiate thoughts, thoughts of love and peace. I radiate thoughts of love and peace for Jamaica, for Jamaica and the world and the world and to anyone who is you make eye contact with say you radiate thoughts of peace and love i feel you you radiate thoughts of peace and love i feel you i love i feel you namaste my friends you radiate thoughts of peace and love I feel you. Be present. Peace and love.